So even though I was calling Jesus my God, I'm over here kind of pissed at him like, well, what you doing? Because you told me to do this stuff. So where's the money? You are heir to the throne of God. But when you come like as if you're not royalty, the question isn't how does my business work? The question is, hold on, who am I in Christ? And why aren't I believing what he has said about me? Welcome back to the Confident Chick Podcast with your host, me, Naya Lynette. So girl, what's been going on since the last time we spoke? What has it been giving? What has your life been giving? I know that by the time that you see this recording, we will have stepped into a new month. Um, it is May. We're already, girl, we are already halfway through this year, just about how are you? Ah, as we transitioned over from April to May, I just kind of began to realize some things in my own life. In order for things to happen, in order for things to change in my life, it really does first start with me. I cannot expect the things in my life to elevate, to progress without first addressing the things that are inside of me. Now, I might just be talking to myself, but I'm not talking to you, sis. I know that between last week and this week, I have had to just confront some things that I had been holding as my truth. And as we step over into the threshold of a new month, a new season, spring is here, we are going forth. It's getting hot outside, the season is changing, and along with that change comes personal change for me as well. I do have a topic that I want to focus on for this episode and really for the rest of May. And just as we get ready to step over into this threshold of a new season, springtime with the new comes the necessity to strip away some things that are old. And so this topic I want to talk about is stripping away false beliefs, letting go old limited thoughts that no longer serve us for where we are going. Because we're going up. And it's only up from here. So being that we are doing big things and we are get going up, sis, there are just certain mindsets that we cannot take with us. But before I get started, let me start by just saying thank you for everybody who listened via um, Apple Podcasts, via Spotify, um, via the actual YouTube channel for those who saw the content and engaged with it on the Confident Chick Instagram. I say thank you. Girl, I know time is valuable. I'm just getting started with this thing, but I thank you for all those who liked, for all those who listened, um, all those who commented. I really appreciate you. It helps to encourage me to keep moving on because let me tell you, for some odd reason, now, this is only my third episode, so I've never done a podcast before, a day in my life, girl. So all of this stuff is new for me, speaking of new season. This is also new for me to step into this. When I tell y'all the pep talk I have to give to myself <laughs> to come to this place and to sit down and to film, and most importantly, for me to be consistent. I don't know about you, girl, but consistency is a thing for me. And it is something that I'm just trying to learn to just, ooh, to just overcome. Because sometimes I like those results kind of quickly. And when that doesn't happen, I tend to like to move on to the next thing, but not this time. And um, this is a passion project. This is a purpose-driven podcast. And I know that... You know, in my walk through healing, in my walk through however it be looking sometimes, I know that it is not just for me. And so, girl, the show up game has to be strong this season. And I am trying to, well, when I plan to sit down earlier this morning to film this podcast, let me tell you how the second I stood up out of bed to go get ready, as soon as I stood up, like, you know how, like, you could get lightheaded sometimes? Felt so lightheaded. And then I was like, ooh. And I sat back down. 
And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I had like a really bad migraine. And I was like, uh, I have not had a migraine in like two years. So I'm like, child, where this came from? Um, and I had to go back to sleep. And I was like, it's still getting filmed today. But, you know, obviously, for those of you on YouTube, you know, I use studio lights and things like that. So I'm like, okay, a migraine and studio lights, you know, mix. So I had to just be like, okay, let me take a pause. Let me lay down. But regardless, it will still happen. The show must still go on. So let's do the hard things together, right? It's not always easy sometimes. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just not do it or to just put it off another week, another month, another quarter. I'll do it over there. I'll do it later. But I'm just at a place in my life, girl, where I'm like, if I don't start now, and if I don't be consistent and show up now, I will never do it. There is a scripture, I'll put it on the screen, that says that he who waits for the wind will never sow the seed. And he who watches the weather will never reap the harvest. Girl, it just basically means that if you're waiting for all your conditions to be perfect before you will want to start your train, your vision, your idea, if you're waiting for all the things to align up, if you're waiting to get the perfect um, number in your bank account to get started, if you're waiting to do this or do that or lose weight before you get going, you will never get started. And because you never get started, you will also never see the fruit or reap the harvest of that vision. And so, yeah, girl, we got to do it. But enough of that, let's get into this topic for today. False beliefs. Now, what is a false belief? False belief is something in your mind that you are holding to be your truth. Notice I didn't say the truth, but something that you are holding as your truth. Now, the things that we believe there is a another like wise proverb that says, as a man thinks, so is he. So what it is that you think and whatever you're holding as your truth, that is the thing that we will be governed by. That's that's like your ceiling. Whatever you believe you can do or can't do is true for you. And that will be your ceiling and that will be your cutoff point for whatever it is that you think or don't think that you can achieve. And so it, it's just that serious when we're talking about it. And it's also known as a limiting belief because if it's a low level vibrational thought, it is limiting to your full potential of who it is you're meant to become. And just from experience and the stretching that I'm, girl, walking through in this season, I'm just seeing and learning that, sis, we are meant to do so much more than we <laughs> then we think, child, so much more than we think that we can achieve. So I knew about this topic for this podcast, um, the next few episodes, really for like a week or so now. And I was like, okay, you know, I prayed about it and stuff like that. And the Lord was like, hey, it's going to be on false beliefs. And so in talking about dismantling those false beliefs so that we could step into our full potential sense. And I was like, okay, awesome, you know. And literally a few days later, I encountered my false belief, girl head all, it just reared its ugly little head, let me tell you. Like I said, like doing this podcast has already been a stretch for me because it's, it's not my comfort zone, to be honest, to turn on the camera and to get on here and to be open or vulnerable like this, it's already a stretch for me personally. God was like stretching me to do even more hey, I don't just want you to build this community. I also want you on your personal page to start doing lifestyle influencing, um, not just encouraging, but also the fashion, the beauty, like all those like lifestyle, like what I do in the day to day and things like that. And that felt like such a stretch because I just immediately in my mind when he said that, I was like, OK, because I don't quite see myself as that just yet. And then it was like, I began to get thoughts. This is the false belief. I began to get thoughts of overwhelm and I began to feel like, how am I gonna do all this? 
build a community, have the podcast, and on a personal side, also build a personal lifestyle influencing brand and posting multiple times a week. And I'm just like, how am I going to do the both of those things? I'm like, I can't do this. How am I going to be able to make money from this? How am I going to be able to da 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 I'm just all in my head. And I almost, it almost tempted me to just want to shrink back again and not even show up. So fast forward a few, you know, I'm just kind of processing that. And then another false belief hit me. I had to face it head on. For the entrepreneurs out there, y'all know sometimes, you know, the money comes in influx. Sometimes we get that money and we get a bunch of it. And sometimes that bank account be looking like, who? Who said, huh? That bank account be trying us. So sometimes it's, 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 it's up and down. It's not always consistent, but shout out to those entrepreneurs who have created the systems and found a way to set up a consistent and a steady revenue. I am not there yet. You know, I thought that uh, I had a gig booked for a fashion and beauty show. They needed extra makeup artists. And I was like, okay, bet I could do that, do a few faces in the morning, be done, get my money. I'm straight for the week, right? Well, I'm thinking that, you know, that was going to work out. I was just asking, I was telling the girl who had another makeup artist who had offered it to me with her in assistance. I'm asking her, I'm like, okay, so, you know, like, when do they pay, when is the payout? Um, how much per phase? Um, how long do we have to wait for the payout? You know, I'm just asking relevant questions that we should know. And she was like, these are great questions. I haven't asked this myself. And I'm like, well, girl, go ask. Cause you know, we gotta get paid for this. You know, some people get a little funky. Let me tell you, when it comes down to like beauty industry and things like that, those things, you have to make people treat your business like a business. Like you gotta come at them with contracts, invoices, deposits, you have to do that because sometimes people don't take what you do as serious, but they want your service. They want their face done, but when it's time to pay, they, they, they all of a sudden, oh, what, huh, huh? And then I just noticed that in beauty, you just have to do that with people. So she's asking them these questions, and she was just like, oh, they say two weeks. And I'm like, two weeks? Then that means that they're going to put us on their payroll as an independent contractor. The event is in like two days. They would have already had their um, person of finance department come and contact us to do it through whatever system they use, ADP, whatever. And I'm like, if that hasn't happened, uh, when we get to the show, that's certain. That's not going to happen at the show. So I just told her, I said, I was like, just ask them a few more questions first. And so as she began to ask them these questions, all of a sudden, like the day before the event, they say, oh, we found makeup bars. We already found all of our makeup bars. We don't need any more. We're fine. And it's just like, really, though? Uh, it was kind of a letdown only because that was the money that I was depending upon getting that week to, you know, pay for our expenses and things like that um, and my bills. And so, oh, y'all, all the old feelings started to, like, come back in my mind. I started to get, it was like old traumas. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in this new place now. Uh, I was like, what is going to happen is it going to happen to me again? Am I not going to be able to pay rent again? Is it happening all over again? I just began to freak out. And I was so like, literally like mentally all of last week, girl, I was battling in my mind because I'm just like, I cannot have this happen to me again. And I was afraid. So when Monday came of this week, I was like, that's it. I was like, I'm not doing anything today i am taking i'm pressing pause i'm getting my journal and i'm about to go have a talk with the lord because my mind right now is not at peace and that's what i do when life be life on me y'all and i'm just like up to my limit like mentally and emotionally when i'm just like getting attacked i take a few hours out of a day if i cannot take the whole day i take a few hours I press pause, I go get my journal, and I just go drive out to a park or something, um, or just somewhere that's like nature-y and quiet and peaceful. And I just come to the Lord and just tell him how I feel and just sit to hear him. 
So I sit with the Lord. I knew that I had to film the podcast. I'm like, and I know that he told me that it was about false beliefs. And I'm just kind of like, I'm sitting here dealing with hell this week financially. I talked to him. I'm like, you know what? I realized at that moment, I was like, I didn't even ask him before I come and talk to you, sis, about false beliefs. I didn't even ask him what my false beliefs were. And he began to reveal to me that I did not believe that he was for me and that he was with me in business and finances and life. And I was like, what? Because, you know, when you say that you follow the Lord, it's like, you know, you say it all proud and loud and stuff like that. And this week's podcast, y'all, it is not going to be me sitting here saying to you, Oh, by the glory of God, I am healed. I am set free and delivered. Yes, praise to be to God. Like, no, 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 no. That's not what this is going to be about. This is going to be vulnerable and telling you where I am in it. And that's what he told me. He said that I didn't believe that he was with me and for me. And he said that I glorified more uh, of what I could do to get the bag, basically, than what he could do. And... I had to sit in that thing for a minute because, and I had to look at it. I looked at the week and I said, you know what? I was depending more upon that gig that week that honestly, it was kind of sketchy because when you really think about it, for them to sit there and hem and haw about how they were going to, child, then was already kind of sketchy about the pain. So either way, like I was sitting there depending more on that opportunity that I was depending on the Lord to provide for me. And oftentimes in my business, honestly, I do find myself, I'm kind of like on like go-getter mode, like survival mode, like, cause this is what I do for a living. It's not like, um, it's not like I have a regular nine to five. So for me, I just, Sometime I'm just in the mode of, I got to get it, I got to go, who I got to offer this discount to, who I got to get the client, how much I got to make care of. That. That's just like sometimes the mindset that I'm in. It's realizing in that moment, who am I going to serve? A few days before that, as I was like in this turmoil about my freaking finances, I was up late watching some YouTube videos or whatever. I couldn't get to sleep because that's how bad it was bothering me. I couldn't even sleep. So I'm just up. It's like two, three in the morning. And randomly this this um ad comes on YouTube and it's this guy he's talking about um making money in the kingdom of God and the misconceptions of it. And I was like, huh. I was like, that's not what I'm watching right now. I was like that wasn't even near the topic that I was currently watching for them to show me that. So I decided I was like, okay, well let me just click on it and see what it's about. And he was talking about what the spirit of mammon really is. So there's a verse in the Bible where it talks about you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve God and serve money or the spirit of mammon. It says because you will end up loving one and hating the other. And when he talked about the ways that we serve the spirit of mammon and not even know it, he was like, when you depend on money to be your provider over God, when you look at your bank account and you let the bank account tell you what you can do and what you can't do, you're filling in the blank with money. I'm good if my money is good. I can do this if money says I can do this. If my bank accounts are straight, I'm secure, I'm safe. And in all those places, those are titles for God, provider, right? Redeemer, like those are all savior. Those are all the, the, the fill in the blanks that God is supposed to be filling. And so I noticed that I did it. I'm like, oh my God, I noticed that I was doing that with my bank account. Listen, I think sometime, oh, maybe I'm just talking to me, but I think sometime I allow money to, dictate my emotions, which is extremely unhealthy. There are times where, you know, if I got it, oh, I'm happy, girl, I'm cheery. But if it's looking tight, if that bank account is giving very much zero, I'm in my feelings. 
and I'm mad. And what I happen to notice is that when I get mad about my finances, I get mad at God. Because doesn't he say that you'll love the other? You'll, you'll either, you can't serve two gods. You're either going to love one and hate the other. So even though I was calling Jesus my God, I'm over here kind of pissed at him. Like, well, what you doing? Because you told me to do this stuff. So where's the money? And kind of just getting in my feelings about it. And so that's what I've been kind of grappling with, with this week. And as I just began to talk with him about some things about this, I began to kind of feel revelation in many different ways. I was listening to a girl randomly. I one morning I got up early the same week after that man's message. I get up early and I decided to, I'm going through my email and I decided to get on this woman. She is a, a really dope community. She's a business coach and she's like marketing genius. And she's also a woman of faith. And I have attended her events in person, but I've never um, got on any of her lives. But this particular morning, it's so funny how God will give you answers through your day to day. <laughs> the things that you're not dealing with, he'll find a way to give you some answers or some wisdom. It's crazy. But I get on her, her I joined the live for the very first time. I didn't know what they were going to be talking about per se, but she ends up talking about, guess what? Girl finances. And she's like, a lot of y'all, you know, are called to do these visions, these ideas, these businesses with God, but you are hesitant to move into it because you wonder how you're going to be provided for and how you're going to pay your bills while you are building the vision. And I was like, oh, child, that's me. And so something she said that was so profound that I just want to share with y'all. It's, it's not my stuff, but... When she said it, it was like res revelation to me. And I'm like, I'm definitely sharing it with y'all. She said that when God gives you a vision, when it is truly from the Lord, and you know that he gave you a vision, there are ways that you can know that the vision is big, is from God is when it is far bigger than how you can see for yourself. And it is um, far greater than anything that you could do alone. And oftentimes it's far bigger than the things that we imagine for ourselves anyway. So, but she said, when that happens and he gives you vision, the provision is actually already there. It's already there. It's just the spirit realm and the natural realm acting, they, they act differently. So something may already be loosed in heaven, AKA it may already be available to you, but you may have to walk through some things to go and get it here on earth so it can be on earth as it is in heaven and so she said when you are stuck in thinking that you have to find the provision you get caught up in doing things that are just so far off from the actual dream the actual idea the actual vision because you're just trying to hustle and trying to get it and get it and that's a whole different mindset than coming to the lord who calls himself king of kings. If he's king of kings, he's referring to us. We are kings. He's saying, I'm the king of kings. So when you're approaching the king of kings and sitting there begging as if you don't have it, as if you are outside of the castle scrapping for some bread on the ground, that's a whole different topic. That's a whole different conversation because now he has to come in and get your mind right because now you're having an identity problem because you don't think that you're worthy enough to step into the things that you are already ordained to have. You are heir to the throne of God. But when you come like as if you're not royalty, the question isn't how does my business work? The question is, hold on, who am I in Christ? And why aren't I believing what he has said about me. And so then you're hustling instead of flowing. You're grinding over grace. And when I really think about that, I'm like, dang, that's already a mindset shift. She said, you already have the provision because God gave you the vision and he's not going to give you vision without provision. But she said this, she said, it is just a matter of asking him, not where is the money, but how do I unlock the provision that you've already assigned to me? How do I unlock the vision, the provision? Where is it? How do I unlock it? 
Because that's a whole different question. That's strategy, actually. When you're asking him, okay, you told me to start this, let's just say, a hair care company. Okay, you told me to start a hair care company. You gave me a vision for it, God. Not how you're going to fund it, but Lord, what's the strategy for me to unlock the next step of this particular vision? Because he may have it for you to go to certain places to connect with certain people. Maybe you're going to get funding for it. Maybe you need it. Maybe he's going to connect you to a co-founder. Maybe he's going to connect you to your next chemist to create the product with you. We don't know, but see, that's where our provision is. We just need the key to unlock it. We just need the key to unlock it. And so... That hit me. I don't know how it's hit me all, but that that hit me this week. I was like, ooh, sometimes I'll be asking the wrong questions because I'll be sitting there trying to beg and be getting mad with God about things. Huh. So I'm just over here trying to trust him step by step and not give up on the vision that he gave me just because it looks a little tight in seasons. And speaking of seasons, that leads me to like my very next revelation of what I feel like I received about false beliefs. So mind you, let's bring it back. I just told y'all that I didn't believe him. Well, God just told me that I did not. I was holding the false belief that he was not with me and he was not for me in business, finance, and in life. I just told y'all about the finance part. And I just told him very candidly a few days ago, I was like, you know what? I was like, where is this promise? Where is this big vision that you have shown me? I was like, I have, I be out here taking bungee jump leaps of faith. You know how some people are afraid to take le- those baby steps of faith? No, I be out here just skydiving. I be like, I don't know how it's going to work, but okay, Lord. I be out here just skydiving in some faith. I promise you. And I told him, I said, Lord, I be taking some big girl steps of faith, kind of more than a lot of people are willing to do. But where are you in this? I'm just like, where are you? Why do you be having me out here looking crazy sometimes? Where are you with these provisions, you know, this answer, these these promises? And it began to hit me like revelation. Y'all, faith is a seed. It's a seed. Think about the people in the Bible, right? And when I told him this, I immediately thought about Abraham. If y'all don't know about Abraham, he's basically like his story is so infamous in the Bible for faith. And it's uh, in the very first book of the Bible, it's in Genesis. In his story, God told him to leave the land of his fathers. This was his household. This was where his family was from, right? This was everything that was familiar to him. And maybe God is calling some of y'all to step on y'all comfort zone, too. Maybe I'm not the only one on here who's supposed to start a podcast. Just saying. <laughs> but, or a new business, um, anything of that nature. But, um, or a side hustle, too. But, so he told him to leave his comfort zone, his familiarity, his father's home. He said, take your things, leave the land that you're most familiar with, and go to a place that I will show you. Now, when he told him, go to, he said, hey, I'm going to make you, your descendants as, as numerous as the stars. Get your things and follow me to a place that I will show you. Now, mind you, when he told him, hey, come to this place that I will show you, he didn't tell him what the place was going to be. It's not like he told him, okay, so turn left, you know, like, this is where it's at. When you get there, let me know. No, it wasn't none of that. He didn't tell him that. He said, you have to leave the place of your comfortability to come to the place that I will show you. And so that was already a deposit of faith. And if you continue to read in that book, you'll see that it didn't, the promise did not come to pass immediately. It wasn't like he left um, on Monday and by Sunday he was up in the promise. No, no, no. It actually took years. Here it was. Abraham said, yes, that was his first seed. I told God, yes, that was just my first seat. And along the journey of you continuing to trust God and you continuing to walk through it, those are all deposits and those are all seeds. 
when we go outside and we want to plant a garden, we put the seed in the ground, we can't come back next week thinking we're going to have the harvest of whatever fruit we were trying to grow in the backyard. That would be silly, right? Because it has to be watered. It has to be nurtured. It has to be prepared. It starts in a very small phase. I once heard a saying that really stuck with me throughout the years. He said that at every phase, the seed grows. That basically just says that even when it doesn't look like it's happening, oh, it's happening. And it goes back to my initial thoughts, which were, you know, this season, while we're stepping into a new season, we're stepping into the spring. With that new season comes personal growth as well. And I literally had to think about some of the things that I had asked God to do in my life. And I had to think about how I told him, like, yo, God, we don't need this job. Let's go. Let me add them. Like, we could do this. We don't need to be working for these people. Let's get it. And I used to, because that used to be my prayer. I used to straight up, like, plead with God to let me leave that job back in the past. And he was like, no, not yet. And so I stayed until he told me to leave. You know, I asked him to do these things. But do I believe that he's actually doing it? And do I believe that in order to have the promise, the promise can be whatever it is that you know that you've been really wanting that the Lord has said yes to. It could be your business. It can be a new endeavor. It can be a side hustle. It can be a spouse. It could be that you want children. It could be that you want to travel. Whatever it is, right? That, that, that passion, that vision, that purpose, whatever that is, understands us that, oh, baby, there will be a process to get to that promised land. And he's not going to have us out here reckless, messing up the promise because we didn't go through the process to become. I thought about all those things I had asked him for. And now that I'm walking through, girl, some rocky ground, now that I'm walking through the journey and he's pulling things out of me and stripping off the false beliefs and and getting me together with my productivity and telling me to get up early in the morning, which is still a struggle, <laughs> and having me to start this podcast and having me to create lifestyle brand content, you know, all these things are such a stretch for me. But if I skip this process and I just, if I could just snap my fingers and go from where Naya is now to where the Naya in the future is. Think about it like this, girl. And five to 10 years from now, sis, you could be a CEO of a multi-million dollar company. Who says you can't? In five years from now, you could start an organization. In five years from now, you can be the founder of a thriving community. In five years from now, you can be uh, in the C-suite of that company that you've been working for. In five years from now, you can be a mom. In five years from now, you could be a wife. All these things take preparation and stewardship of where you are now. He says in his word, there's a verse that says, do not despise small beginnings, for in it the Lord rejoices to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, who was the king at the time. I'll put it on the screen. But basically, we can't want these grand big things without walking through the very small things, getting on live, getting on podcasts, only getting a few views and listens at first, but having the courage and the discipline to continue to do it despite of how many people show up or how many people don't show up, but saying that, no, I have a vision, I have a dream, and this is just a faith seed into that dream, into that idea that's going to reap a beautiful harvest in due time. He says in his word, he says, for everything under the sun, there is a season. And he says that everything, not some things, he says in his word, everything is made beautiful in its time. Hear that. It's made beautiful in its time. And so there are things in me that are not yet ready for the future version of where God would have. I'm still in the making child. I'm still getting cleaned up. 
right? And maybe you are too, sis. You know, imagine if you could fast forward five or 10 years into the future for now and you, and you got it, right? You a boss, sis. You a mom, right? But imagine having skipped the process. Can the you, the future you in five to 10 years from now, be able to hold the weight and the pressure of the call of your purpose? Can you be able to steward a multi-million dollar decision right now if you skip the process to become it? Or will it crush you? And when I had to think about it like that, I'm like, yo, God is with me. Because remember, my false belief was that I wasn't believing him to be with me in finance, in business, and in life. Maybe you can relate. And so if I wasn't believing him to be with me, then I'm out here thinking I'm doing it by myself. But really, in all actuality, he's pruning me. He's getting me ready. He's telling me to set the things up because he is doing it. It has a time. It has a time that it's going to be beautiful. It has a time that it's gonna that it's going to be fruitful. It has a time that you're gonna laugh and rejoice about the very thing that you were promised. Well, first, sis, we gotta become. Yes, the process is very needed. Because do you know that your promise, do you know that that idea can crush you if you're not ready? What kind of God would he be if he just let us be crushed <laughs> under all the pressure? We made one wrong decision with our multi-million dollar company and the thing just tanked. Imagine that. Imagine him letting that happen because he skipped the process. Y'all know that uh, that line from Kanye, his old song, I can't remember the name of the song, but he was like, you know, white folks get money and don't spend it, but black folks get money and go ignorant. That always like sticks with me because I'm like, yo, I wouldn't want to get this money finally and get like, you know, my dream clients and and, and get six and seven figures of my business and then just go and act ignorant. I don't want to be out here acting a monkey with money. I don't want to let money control me. And so I just kind of think about that. If, if we don't walk through the process of getting that stuff stripped off of us, you get there and then you don't know what to do with it, right? That's why people who win the lottery, they blow it, they spend it on dumb stuff, and like a year later, or a little over a year later, they have nothing to show for it. Why? Because the foundational pieces of their character, of their habits, of the discipline that it took to grow and produce millions, it's not in them. Versus somebody who built a company from the ground up and who walked through some things or who maybe made some money mistakes or who maybe walked through some bankruptcy or not, but they learned the discipline that it took and they learned to, they learned to put the systems in place that it takes to be able to steward an influx of millions in your business. Because let's go there real quick with business. So many of us want six and seven figures, but girl, what do six and seven figures cost? If you sell a product and all of a sudden, in a couple of weeks, you start getting orders and you get six to seven figures worth of uh, top line revenue, first off, do you have the capacity? Do you have the manufacturers set up in the right way? Like, do you have the distribution center on lock? Do you have a relationship with your manufacturer where they could produce at that type of volume? Do you have the capital to be able to uh, get that product do you have a system set up to where they can automatically purchase? They can automatically get it shipped in a timely manner. Because six and seven figures takes stewardship and management, just as five figures would or four figures. I have just been being humbled, child, <laughs> and learning that I have to be prepared for these things that I've been asking for. And I have to have things, old things have to be taken off me in order to successfully manage that which I'm called to. And so, girl, that's what this week was giving. That is what this week was giving, honey. And so, the old mindset that I am releasing this week, sis, is the limiting belief that God is not for me and he's not with me in business, in finance, and in life. 
And instead, I choose to elevate the frequency of my mind. And I choose to sync with the mind of Christ and step into all the creativity that he's given me and stop hiding some of that creativity and start stepping into it and not second guessing it so much. Continuing to build and be consistent because you're not going to have it if you're talking to me. I'm not going to have it if I can't be consistent and disciplined and steward what he already has told me. So those are the mindsets I am releasing, girl. And back to this real quick, let me circle back to this creativity thing. Some of us, I'm talking to me and you, some of us watching and listening, we're not one trick ponies. Girl, there's something else you're supposed to be doing too. Some of us, yes, you may do X, Y, Z by your trade, but you also got that other idea over there that it needs to, it, you need to get the ball rolling with it. We're not fitting in boxes. Let's not box God in. We cannot put him in a cube of box and unwrap him on Sunday and then put him back in that box for the rest of the week and be like, hush now. I don't want to hear from you no more for the rest of this week. No, no, no. A lot of us, especially those of us who are called, uh, who are very creative, right? For us who are really creative, we have so many different ways that we can use the creativity that we've been given. So many different ways. And you may do this one thing or that over there, but it doesn't mean that you can't. That same talent and that same gift can be used in various different ways across various different industries. And real quick, if you are listening or watching this and you are saying, girl, I don't even know what my gift is and I don't even really know what my talent is. I have a video for you on my page under the confidence series. Um, I will um, link the video in the show notes below and I will also put the video um, somewhere on the screen if you're watching by YouTube. We go over a talent assessment in that video and we just kind of break down what talents and gifts are. We talk about different ways after we do a talent assessment. We talk about different ways that you can use yours and just different ideas just to get the, you know, get the ball rolling and get the creative muscle and just flowing, you know? Because sometimes we tend to tell ourselves, oh no, just ain't nobody doing that, or that's too much, or I can't do this and that. And why is it ever either or? Why is it ever this or that? Why can't they be both, sis? Yeah, they may have different appointed times for which they're going to bloom and blossom, but why you can't have multiple seeds in your garden? Why you can't blow you, uh, grow you a little hibiscus tree and a mango tree in your garden? Why are we going to be one, one trying minded? We are creative, honey. So there's so much more for us, but I am going to pause it here, sis. Listen. For y'all who are watching me on YouTube, put in the comments, y'all, like, what limiting belief, what false mindset are you letting go this month of May? Because we are springing forth, girl. We are blooming. We are blossoming. And so what are we leaving behind? What no longer suits us in the version that we are so actively becoming every single day? Every day that you choose to get up and do it again another day, every day that you choose to show up, because showing up is so important, every day that you choose to build out that idea, to film, to get on camera, to whatever it is that you do, every day that you decide to do that, that's a step forward, girl. And as we close out this episode, I just want to leave us this week with a prayer. I want to pray over you, sister. I want to pray over you week. Really quick, if you have a few minutes. And so, Father God, I just thank you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your precious daughter on the other side of this phone, on the other side of this camera. I thank you, Father God, for creating her. I thank you, Lord God, that she is fearfully and wonderfully made. And that she is who you say she is. She is not her past, Lord God. 
She is not what naysayers have said about her. She is not the lies that maybe someone told her of her self-worth, but she, oh, she is precious in your sight. And I just speak over you, sister, this week that the love of God would surround you in your sister, in your situation and in your circumstance this week. I decree and declare the love of God to come and surround you right now. I decree and declare and call forth angels to surround you and cover your comings and your goings, sister. Uh, I declare the blood of Jesus over your children, over your spouse. Lord God, I declare and sprinkle the blood of Jesus over her mind as we are stepping into releasing false mindsets. I decree and declare that the mindsets that are not from the kingdom of God be broken off you now, sister. The false belief that you are not enough, the false belief that you will never be more, the false belief that you will never leave that city and that you will never go and do more, the false belief that you're not good enough to do it. I call it to the ground right now in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to fill her, Lord God, as she goes throughout her week, Lord God. Begin to stir her up for the things that you've placed on the inside of her. Because who can tell the person who they are and what they are not but the maker and the lover of your soul? And so I decree and declare over you, sister, that Holy Spirit will begin to stir up a new thing in you this week. And that he will begin to activate and he will begin to remind you. And that he will begin to circle you back to the things that he placed inside you and that he called you to do. That you put down because you felt that you had to. Or because situation, because of life happening. But I decree and declare today that uh, the father of the heavenly lights, who does not change, I declare and decree that he would come and would whisper to you and that you would perceive the tender sound of his voice, activating you again to do what it is that he placed inside of you. And I just decree and declare and I speak, I speak a word of confidence, godly confidence over that woman on the other side of this screen. I speak confidence into you, sister, godly confidence. It hit different. I speak a higher knowing of your true identity into you now in Jesus' name. Let them come into a grateful awareness, Father God, of their true identity and who you have created them to be. I release it now in Jesus' name. I call forth the woman of God that you were created to be. Arise now in Jesus' name and go forth and be bold this week. Amen and amen. Uh. This was so good, sis. Enjoy the rest of your week and we'll talk soon. Bye.